everyone and welcome back for a new video tutorial um, with me Emma from Emma Crafts Design. Today I want to show you how to make a Chinese lantern. So I designed this last year for the Lunar New Year and I thought that I would make a little video tutorials for you guys for this year. So the way it's gonna work we're gonna start by making the body of the lantern and I Today I have chosen to um, use green yarn to do this and then we are going to make the top of the lantern and then the bottom with the frills. Um, you can also choose to embroider symbols onto your lantern afterwards. I think for this tutorial I will just leave it bare but um, yeah if you fancy you could always embroider. Um, here I've embroidered the symbols for um, good fortune if I did it properly so it should be um, luck and good fortune um, hopefully that is what it means because I do not really speak Chinese and I'm not very good at it so yeah hopefully that's what it is there all right so just similar to um, last time I will be using my favorite crochet hook which is a 3.5 millimeter clover hook. I will be using some yarn. Um, this is DK or eight ply cotton yarn from my local craft store. Um, and I'll be using the green to make the main body of the lantern and this yellow to make the top and the bottom. Um, I also have um, hypoallergenic polyfill and I have a needle for sewing later and some scissors as well. Okay, let's get started. So, to make the lantern, you will start by making a magic ring. Again, if you're not familiar with this technique, I do have a tutorial on how to make it. So I would suggest you go and watch this, but I will just make my magic ring and I will single crochet six into the magic ring. As usual, I don't fully close my magic ring until after I've done the second round. So I'll just leave it a little bit loose until, just so that this first stitch here is easily accessible. So the next round will be to increase in each stitch until we have 12 um, stitches. So just single crochet increase into each stitch. Um, if you also would like to follow along with the instructions, the free pattern will be available on my website. Um, you can just follow the link down in the description box um, to get to the free pattern. And of course you can always crochet along with me right now. So now that I've done my second round, I can just close my um, my magic ring. So I just do that by pulling really hard on it. So I now have 12 stitches. Um, I will grab my stitch marker as well. Which one should I use today? Um, I might use my Ravenclaw stitch marker for today. I just made, it's really old. You can see it's starting to actually lose its colors. Okay, so for the next um, round, we are going to single crochet one and then increase and repeat that all around until we have 18 stitches. So just single crochet one and then increase into the next one. I'm hoping this shouldn't take too long because it's a pretty small pattern so it should be nice and easy and even if you're a beginner you should be able to do this.
All right, so the next round we are going to um, go to 24 stitches. So we're going to single crochet twice and then we're going to increase. So single crochet one, oops, two, then increase and we'll repeat that all around until we have 24 stitches. Alright, the next round is actually um, an interesting one. So the next round we're going to only use the back loop of the previous round and this is to create this um, like an attachment point so that we can then attach the top directly without having to sew it on. So to do this, when you look at your stitches, you're probably familiar but the, there's two loops there. So there's a front loop here of the stitch and the back loop here. So we're only going to grab onto the back loop. And what we'll do is we'll do three single crochet and then an increase and all of that in the back loop until we reach 30 stitches. So see how I only take the back loop? One, two, three single crochet. And then we're going to go and work an increase into that back loop here. And we'll do that all around. So I forgot to mention, but my sample that you can see here, the red one, um, that was made using a smaller hook and a thinner yarn. So our lantern that we're making today is going to be a lot bigger, or maybe not a lot, but you know, it, it will be bigger than that sample one. So that's always also something to remember when you crochet. If you take a bigger hook with a slightly thicker thread, you'll have a bigger final object. Okay, so that's the last increase of the round. And so you will notice, you can see now all those front loops there are free. So this will be used later on to be able to do the top and the bottom of the lantern. So the next round is again an increase round. So we're going to single crochet four. And then do an increase until we have, um, I think it's 36 stitches.
And we still have two more rounds of increase. So the next round will be single crochet five and then increase um, to get to 42 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and then increase and all around. So just repeat these instructions all around. Same as what we've previously done. Okay, and now we're going through the last round of increase, which will be single crochet six and then increase and repeat all around. Um, and this will lead us to 48 stitches, if I'm, yes, that should be 48. So six and then increase. I know a lot of people like to um, stagger their increases so that you can't really tell them apart, but I actually prefer to have all my increases on top of each other because I find it just a lot simpler to follow. And I don't mind the fact that it's like a slightly more um, hexagonal look with it. What do you guys think? Do you normally stagger do you just follow the pattern like exactly what the pattern says or do you like to like have your increase staggered um or do you like to have them like stacked i guess you can let me know because i've tried i've tried it a few times like to just have them staggered so that you can't tell you know that it's a hexagon and it looks a lot more round in shape but um yeah, I just find that I get really lost with where I'm at. So I actually quite like when they're stuck because it's very obvious. Okay, so you can tell that it's already going to be a lot bigger um, than this. But now that we've finished all the increases, we're just going to go and work onto the main, um, the few rounds. So we're working from rounds 9 to 11. So that's three rounds where we're just going to um, cro single crochet one in each of the stitches. So we're going to do that for three rounds.
Okay, so I'm almost at the end of my third round and I stupidly realized that I don't have enough yarn for it. So um, I just took this um, yarn that I just have in my stash. Um, it's not quite the same color, but it's pretty close. So I'm just going to um, attach it to this project and finish with that. But I think that is a lesson for everyone to just check you have enough. I just had scraps and I really want to finish up my scraps. So I think that will do for this time. If you're really, um, you know, worried about not being able to finish a project, I would always suggest you start with a new um, skein or a new ball of yarn, but I just, I, I don't really mind. Okay, so I've just finished um, round 11 which was um, again to just single crochet in every single stitch. And now we are going to start the decreases on the other side. So round 12 is to single crochet six and then do a decrease. So we will do six single crochet. And then we'll do a decrease. So to do a decrease, I like to use the invisible decrease method, which is where you just insert your hook through the front loop of the next two stitches and then pull up a loop and then finish your stitch as normal. So I'll do that all around until we go back to 42 stitches. So you can see that it's not quite the same color of yarn, but I think it will still look fine. And I have to say, I was just a little bit lazy about starting again. So if you do ever like run out of yarn and you just want to use something, some other yarn, um, you can see that, you, you know, obviously try to color match as close as possible, but this is not even a cotton yarn. This is the new one that I'm using is just acrylic. What's just really important is you still want to have the same weight. So it is a, de a DK still, which means that I can still use the same hook and it will give me the same um, size of stitches which is why I don't think it's um, bothering me at all. But yeah, if you would prefer, obviously it's always better to have the same yarn to finish your project. Okay, so next round, so round 13 will be five a single crochet and then a decrease and we'll just do that all around again until we reach back down to 36 stitches, sorry. five and then a decrease
Okay, next round, um, round 14, will be single crochet four and then decrease all around until we reach 30 stitches. Right, next one is round 15. So we will be single crochet three and then a decrease. Um, and that's six times to complete the rounds. And so that will lead us back to 24 stitches. So one, two, three, and then decrease and repeat that all around. I do like decreasing because the rounds are smaller and smaller and it gets faster and faster to finish which is nice. I don't know about you but I just love the instant gratification of having a finished project. It's so good. Okay, so now it's going to be time to work in the back loops only. So this will create the ridge for the bottom of the lantern. And um, yeah, so because it's a no sew pattern. So see at the bottom of the lantern also is um, crocheted directly on those stitches that we will leave now. So I'll just put my marker back and in the back loop only, we're going to single crochet two and then decrease um, and then six times around to get 18 stitches. So if you aren't familiar with how to do a decrease in the back loop only, um, I have actually done a little video tutorial for that as well. It's pretty much just a um, normal decrease that you would do. So we will do two single crochet. So remember to only grab that back loop there. 
and then I just insert oh, insert my hook under the back if I can stop splitting that stitch here we go so just grab a loop and then insert it to the next one grab another loop and then just finish your stitch you could try to go for an invisible decrease and like kind of insert your hook into the back loop only without pulling loops but what I find is that it's generally a bit harder to do so you can try to do it and I guess it does work but it's a little bit more fiddly so when instead of doing that I just like to do a normal decrease and just pull up loops I find it a lot easier and I think it's a lot more enjoyable if it's easier <laughs> And I mean, can you really tell the difference between the two decreases? It's not, it's not that obvious, so. But do whatever works for you. So just make sure that you do um, that round in the back loops on though. Because if you don't, then you won't be able to make that extra part of the lantern, the bottom part, it will be a lot harder to make. Okay. So the interesting thing too is that from um, round 15 to round 16, so obviously we're going down to 8 in stitches, but you will still have those 24 stitches from the previous round um, that are free because you did decreases into that back loop, so you still have those 24 stitches from the previous round so now that we've reached that stage um that's the stage where i normally like to do my stuffing because so this is kind of a flat lantern um but i like to stuff it quite well so make sure you insert enough stuffing um so right now it looks a bit like a pancake but once you add the stuffing, that's really what gives it its shape. So I like to really go onto the outside there and really give it that nice shape. I think it might need a little bit more. And I try to make sure that it's distributed evenly around so that when we then close it, you know, it's like round-ish in shape and not All right, I think that's probably okay. So now you can probably still also add a bit more stuffing just before you close it towards the end. But that's going to be okay for, for now. Um, and we want to move on to the next round. So the next round will be back in both um, loops of the stitch. So we want to do one single crochet and then one decrease until we reach 12 stitches. So I'm going back to just doing my normal um, invisible decrease.
here we go back to 12 and now we're just going to decrease six times in order to um, close that main lantern shape um, so yeah that's just the end if you want to add a bit more stuffing just do it now I might just add a teeny tiny bit more make sure that it's all well distributed then once you're happy with the stuffing you can just go on to your last six decreases to close your lantern Okay, so I'll just go ahead and fasten off and now you can also weave in the ends. So my preferred method of weaving in the ends when you're doing a um, circular shape and you have a low number of stitches is I'll go and insert my needle on that front loop of the last six stitches and then I'll just pull to close it so see I just put in in all the front loop and then you just pull and that closes it nicely and then you just want to kind of go back and forth a few times to make sure that it is secure Um, and then you just cut your thread and that's it all right so this is a lantern shape now the next step is going to be to do those top and bottom parts of the lanterns so we will start with the top part so we're going to use that yellow yarn and we're going to use those back loop sorry those three front loops that we've got from the main lantern body to attach the yarn directly. So a little trick that I normally do, instead of starting into that first, like this first free front loop here, I normally try to start on the other side because if you start here, then you might actually see that junction between those two um, stitches as you go around if you start further you can make sure that the stitches going over this section um, are actually a little bit more tight and that will prevent having a hole so I'll just insert my hook over here for example and then I'll just attach my yellow yarn so to do this I'll just pull a first loop and then I like to just do a chain to attach it. And then we will start um, in that first round by just um, doing a round of single crochet. So there'll be 24 single crochet in total. So in the same stitch that I insert my oak in, I just do my first stitch and then I just keep going around. And I like to crochet over that tail there just because that will extra secure it in place as well. So those can be a bit tricky to grab, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so, um, I've actually, yeah, so there's six stitches here. So I've joined six stitches before the end. And now see how we want to jump on here. So to do this, you want to make sure you're grabbing that first stitch there. And you just 
continue as normal but see because now I'm just making my stitches quite tight there it will just continue um, and it won't have a hole in whereas if you had started with this one as a first stitch you might have a hole when you um, are then continuing on to the second round so and that just doesn't look very nice so that's why that's how I do it I'm gonna just trim this because this is annoying me. <laughs> so the only thing is that before you um, just continue on to round two, you just really wanna make sure here that you do have the 24 stitches. Um, so that you haven't forgotten any of those loops or that you haven't, um, you know, made two stitches into the one loop. So I'll just count quickly. Yeah, so that should have 24. And now you just continue as a spiral. So you just will be continuing back into that first stitch here. And the second second round will um, also be two single crochet in each of the stitches. So you can either put you know your marker into the last stitch, or you can just um, you you'll notice when you reach that. Okay, so now that you've finished that second round, the next step is we're gonna work in the back loops only and we're gonna just um, start decreasing. So we'll be um, doing that flat top there. So the next round, which is round three, in the back loop only, we're going to single crochet two and then do a decrease um, to reach 18 stitches. So. Just do two um, single crochet and then a decrease and then you do that around and that's only in the back loop. So remember to only grab your back loop.
Okay, so once you've finished that first round of decrease, you can just um, add a little bit of stuffing to that top of the lantern if you would like to. Um, you don't need to add a whole lot, but it just does help um, to just give it a bit more shape. So I think that's probably all I will add, but see, it will just help to get that nice little ridge there. So once that's done, you can keep going with the next round of decrease. So we will go from 18 um, to 12. So we'll just do one single crochet and then one decrease and continue this all around. And remember that now we want to go back into both loops. So one single crochet and then one decrease and you just continue that until you have 12 stitches. Okay, so once you're down there, um, you have to do the last round, which is decreases, so six decreases to go back to six um, stitches. So just six decreases. And when you finish with your decreases, um, you want to make the loop here that will allow you to hang your lantern. Um, so if you don't want that loop, you can just stop now, I guess. But if you would like to make your loop, what you have to do is you have to um, chain 10. Oops. And 10. And then um, you just will slip stitch in the third um, single crochet, like the single, the third stitch down here. So we'll just count one, two, and here is the third. So you just grab that and do a slip stitch. All right, and then you can just um, cut your thread. And we will use the same method that we used to um, close the lantern to within the ends at the top here. So again, you'll just thread your yarn needle. And you can just try to grab those front loops. And then obviously you have to go to the other side there. So I'll just did I just did three stitches on this side. Um, I'll just have to go behind that chain there, and then on the other side as well. The front loops, and then you just pull um, and see that helps to close that top of the lantern and then make sure that you go back and forth a few times to close the top. Okay, and so you now have a nice little loop there to hang your lantern if you want to. 
I'll just so yeah I really like this pattern because it's completely like no pretty much no sewing the only sewing you're doing is to weave in your ends so yeah I do enjoy that all right and the last part that we have to do now is the bottom of the lantern so it's going to be similar to what we've just done for the top except that we are going to do those fringes as well um, so that's all included as you go so similarly to what we did for the top we don't want to start at that junction here we'll just start a little bit um, further up So again, I'll just, maybe we should just get um, into the sixth one so that it's the same as the top. So I'll just get into that sixth loop there. And again, you just pull up, do a chain, and then you just can start with your single crochet. So it's exactly the same. We're going to do 24 single crochet into those front loops that are left over. And um, once again, just do make sure before you finish that round that you have counted and that you do have those 24 stitches because otherwise the count will be off for the rest of um, that bottom part. So um, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now make sure to really grab that last and to really tighten it so that we won't see it too much and you just keep going All right, now that we've got our 24 stitches around, um, it's again the same. We will just do one single crochet in each of those stitches. So we'll just go around one more time until we have 24 stitches. And I'll put my marker now because um, yeah, the next one will be a bit different because this is when we're going to do the frills on the next round. So. Okay, so now like I said, the next bit is we want to do those thrills. So we are going to crochet in the front loop only this time. So instead of, remember when we have those two loops, instead of doing the back loop like we've been doing, we're going to do the front loop first. So the next step is in the front loop only, we will do one single crochet, then we will chain four, So, and that will just be doing those frills 
and then we're going to slip stitch down that chain so you slip stitch three down the chain so you just miss that first um that first chain because if you do um, obviously that unravels it so just st slip stitch one two and three down the chain and then we are going to slip stitch again into that first stitch that we did last time and then we're going to single crochet one into the next stitch and we're going to repeat this 12 times so we're going to have 12 of those little frills going down so I'll do it again slowly one more time with you and remember we're only doing this in the front loops so that we want to have those back loops free for later so what I'll do actually is just to make sure we don't lose our first because you can see get a bit it gets a bit um, a bit hard to tell which one is your back loop so I just put my marker into that first back loop so that when we do the next round we know where we're going so I'll just leave that here and we want again on the front loop so we're gonna single crochet one then we're going to chain four then starting from the second chain from the hook we're going to slip stitch three down that chain oh one two and three down that chain then we're going to slip stitch at the base of the chain so in the same one that we already did our first single crochet and then we're going to single crochet into the next stitch right. and so we're just going to repeat that all around one so I'll just check in a second that we do have 12 of those little frills okay so let's just make sure that we do have 12 of those one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve perfect so now that we've finished this the next round so if you look at the pattern it's written um, as round four but it is in fact round three bis because what we're going to do is we're going to work into that back loop only from round two um, so see I put that stitch marker here from round two what I'll do is I will move the stitch marker so just make sure that you do see where that stitch is and then I will move it from here to the last back loop only of that round two the one that we just worked into and then you are going to continue 
into that back loop only that is left now. So this round we're going to single crochet two and then decrease and that's going to be all the way around. So single crochet one, two and then do your decrease and this is exactly what we did for the top of the lantern. And this will give us the ridge and just close that bottom part. So just go ahead and continue around until you have 18 stitches. Okay, and see like I'm glad I did have that marker there so now I know that I've got the right count so I'll just do my last decrease for this round until here we go okay and so now that we've gone down to 18 stitches you can start stuffing so same as before we can start stuffing the bottom of the lantern so I'll just add a little bit of stuffing, just like I did for the top, just so that it gives it its shape. So I'm mostly just putting it on the sides there. All right, and now we can just continue and finish to close there. So it's gonna be the same as before. We're going to do one single crochet and then one decrease um, alternating until we reach back to 12 stitches so okay you have to make sure that you take that first stitch right so there's a couple of ways to know which one is the stitch so it's not going to be this one see how this one is the one that's just after the frill and remember that was our last stitch of the round before so we want to go all the way into this stitch here and we're doing into both loops one and then we just decrease and we're going to do that until we reach 12 stitches so um, yeah a single crochet and then a decrease all around All right, and the last round before you finish your lantern is just six decreases. So same as before, just to finish off, we're doing the last six decreases before we just fasten off and then we can tidy up. that's it so you just fasten off and then we will do the same technique that we used to close the hole so you just thread your needle and we're going to pick up all the front loops of those stitches the last six stitches
Oh no, I caught one of the frills. <laughs> Here we go. Just weave it in a couple of times to secure it. I just keep on getting caught on those frills. Here we go. All right. And then you can just cut that and that's it. You are finished. So you should be able to just then pull down the frills so that they are facing towards the bottom. All right. And um, this is your lantern finished. So again, like I said before, you could um, embroider um, something on top or just leave it like that. But this is your finished lantern. And see the fact that we started kind of off that um, previous rounds there, it means that it's kind of hard to tell where the beginning of that circle was. And I think it's kind of nice that you can't really see it. And same with the top. So this is it, guys. This makes your Chinese lantern. Um, you can see that when you do it with a 3.5 millimeter hook and DK, it's a lot bigger than I think this one I made with a four ply yarn and a um, three millimeter or 2.5 millimeter. So it's quite a big difference in size, but you can now thread your lantern and um, display them. And that's a really cool little decoration for Lunar New Year. Um, so yeah. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to my channel for more content. And um, yeah, I had lots of fun again today with you. I hope you did too. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.